And we're very much looking on a room by room basis. What can we do in this particular room, in this instance, in the living room? Um, there's many things we can do. These are just some of the things. Um, one of the major things that we would, we would recommend firstly is having the most energy efficient appliances, and that's going to be um, in the living room, in the kitchen um, mainly. Um, so TVs um, uh, and other appliances, um, games consoles, quite energy, en high energy use items. Um, the most energy efficiency appliances are always going to be the quickest way to try and reduce energy consumption. But as we know, a lot of people can't afford the most energy efficiency appliances, so that makes that a little bit more difficult. There's other things we can do, as I mentioned before, putting LED light bulbs in, quite a simple, low cost um, measure. Um, not only just LED light bulbs, but also looking at um, uh, the number of light bulbs that we're using in a home. Um, I, personally, I see more and more lights in the homes than usual. We've got the inset lights in the ceiling. We may have 10 lights coming on in one room or three or four bulbs in one lampstand. So I think it's also looking at the type of appliances we have um, in the first place, not only energy efficiency, also are they practical? Um, do we need certain appliances um, in the first place? Um, we're looking at moving furniture around. Um, that's always um, a really quick way um, to be able to allow, for example, if there's um, um, a sofa or a chest of drawers or a wardrobe that's directly in front of the radiator, that's going to inhibit the amount of heat that's um, uh, being output from that particular radiator. So it's not we're paying for it. It's very expensive energy, but it's not being we're not feeling the full benefits of that um, because it's not circulating around the home, and it also could also cause some problems with damp mold condensation if we're trapping air in and we're not allowing things to ventilate. So a simple thing would be to you know just look at where the furniture is placed in relation to the radiators and the um, the heating system. Uh, I mentioned earlier reflective panels around the radiator, so we've got the reduced amount of heat that's leaking straight through the wall there. Um, and that's more effective on different types of properties. So for solid walls, for example, we haven't got cover to wall insulation, a reflective panel would be more um, uh, beneficial than having a wall which already has cover to wall insulation. It would have more, it would reduce the amount of heat leaking to a greater degree. Um, looking at what we've got um, in terms of like curtains or do we have blinds? Um, having some thermal curtains in, in winter could be um, fairly inexpensive. Um, and we could really see quite a quick payback period of time uh, with this. So we could, you know, have a, uh, the curtains just just above the radiator there, nice thick curtains, really reducing the amount of heat that's leaking straight through the window. And we saw earlier between 10 and 15 percent is going through there. Um, a quite a simple measure. Um, and then we're looking at things like um, uh, chimneys. Do we have open chimneys, um, particularly in um, out of season? Uh, we could have chimney balloons, again, reducing the amount of heat that's that's um, leaking through there and reducing the amount of drafts as well. Um, quite simple measures. Um, OK, so there's lots of things we can do um, in the living room. And one of the things I mentioned earlier is the um, the use of thermostats, program and timers um, to regulate the temperature in our in our, in our home. So it's coming on at particular times of the day, uh, rather than uh, rather than starting from zero degrees and then building up to say 16 and 17. It's a more effective, more economical way of using the the heating system in most circumstances. <laughs> 